The Nintendo Game Boy was revolutionary in its time, bringing portable gaming to those who had smaller pockets and founding Nintendo as the leader in the portable games market. It solidified itself in the market with its low starting price at $89 and its vast library of games that you could hop right in and play. While the original white brick was still very popular, other models came out like the Game Boy Pocket, the Game Boy Light, which was only a Japan thing, and the Game Boy Color. This is what I think to be the end of the original Game Boy line. Was the Game Boy Color more powerful? Yes. Did it have different features and hardware? Also yes. But is it a enough of a step forward to be considered its own console? To me, no. Sorry, Scott. First, let's take a look at the vast software library of the Game Boy. With such a large library of games, the Game Boy had a little something for everyone. Racing games, sports games, RPGs, platformers. The Game Boy had it all. It was almost like a little black and white NES in your pocket. But none of those games would have been developed if the Game Boy wasn't such a success. And we all, all of that success to Tetris, the first game to come out on Game Boy, and actually the packing game for the system. Tetris was actually so successful that when I went to capture some gameplay footage from a camera, I ended up playing 10 minutes of it without even realizing. So if anyone wants a uncut 10 minute and 6 second video of me playing Tetris poorly, uh, let me know. Originally, Nintendo was going to pack in Super Mario Land with the Game Boy, but they were convinced to not do that and instead pack in Tetris, because Super Mario Land almost seemed like more of a kid's game, whereas Tetris would initially appeal to everybody. Although the original Game Boy didn't have the packing game to appeal to kids, it was sure built to stand up to them. The Game Boy is an absolute brick, both physically and with its strength. We're going to ignore the fact that my... Game Boy's front glass is taped in with a piece of double-sided tape, but otherwise the Game Boy was built like a brick. Not only was it super durable, but it also had the battery life to back it up. The official battery life of the Game Boy, depending on your batteries, is up to 30 hours. I haven't had to put new batteries in this thing for years, which is really surprising. The Game Boy lacked a bunch of features that its competitors had at the time. For example, a backlight, and a viewable screen. And while these deficiencies certainly weren't ideal, they allowed the Game Boy to stay at its amazing price point at $89, and that allowed it to be the most approachable system at the time. The Game Boy's main competitors were the Atari Lynx and Sega Game Gear. But realistically, can we even consider these systems competitors? I mean, heck, the Game Boy sold almost double both the Atari Lynx and Sega Game Gear combined, with 118.69 nice, million units sold. This thing was a monster in its time. This does encompass all the quote original models, which are the Game Boy Color, Light, Original, and Pocket, but that's still an obscene number, especially considering that the Game Boy was only discontinued in March of 2003. That's a 19 year lifespan. That's so incredibly impressive. I mean, you're not gonna see the PlayStation 5 getting sold until 2031. And that just shows even today, there's a reason that people use Game Boy emulators on their modern systems. It's because the Game Boy is such a classic and amazing system that people still love the games. It's not something where the games got old and gimmicky as time went on, but it's something that where the games were originally just high quality. I mean, heck, I still carry a Game Boy Advance SP on me daily just because it can play all original Game Boy games games, and the Game Boy Advance games, the thing just has a giant library, it's just incredible. I mean, the original Game Boy only had 8 kilobytes of RAM, 32 kilobytes of cartridge space, and only had 4 colors that it could display on its screen, and yet it still was such a monster in its time. It started to build Nintendo's whole shtick of just not using the most powerful hardware, but still getting the job done because of amazing exclusive games. This can be seen in the 3DS, DS, and even the Nintendo Switch now. Well, that's about it for this short rant. Um, here, I do have some questions though. Uh, one of them would be, do you guys like this type of content? Wh or what do you, would you like better? Um, did you ever own an original Game Boy? Uh, both those questions, feel free to answer in the comments. I'd love to hear them. See ya.